Step into reading three, the history reader, Christopher Columbus, by Stephen Krinsky, illustrated by Norman Green. It is August three, fourteen ninety two. A new day begins in a busy Spanish harbor. Three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, are starting out to sea. Some day, these ships will be famous. People will know their names five hundred years later, but the men on board cannot even imagine that. They are afraid of getting lost. The ocean is a great mystery. How big is it? How long will it take to cross it? What is on the other side? Will they ever get back to Spain? Christopher Columbus is not afraid of getting lost. He is the captain of the Santa Maria. And the leader of the voyage, Columbus knows a lot about the sea. He is a navigator and a map maker. Now he dreams of becoming an explorer too. The rulers of Spain, Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand, believe in Columbus. They are paying for his trip. Columbus promises to find a new route from Spain to the far east. India, China, Japan, the Indies, lands of gold and valuable spices. If he succeeds, Spain will be rich. Columbus knows the world is round. Why not travel to the far east by sailing west? But the world is bigger than Columbus thinks, and there is something else Columbus doesn't know. Two huge continents lie in his way. Nobody in Europe knows they are there. Soon the sailors cannot see land. Now they are really afraid. What if the wind stops blowing? The ships have no motors. What if there is a storm? The ships are small and made only of wood. What if they run out of food? They cannot go back for more. What if they are in danger? They cannot radio for help. But the weather is good, the wind blows steadily, the sea is calm, the ships are loaded with food and water, there are extra sails and spare wood. In fact, so much is stored below. The sailors must sleep on deck. There are ninety men in all, about thirty on each ship. Most are sailors, but there is also a doctor, a carpenter, a goldsmith. And an interpreter who speaks Arabic. There are even some boys to help the sailors. Weeks and weeks go by. Now everyone is tired and scared, tired of eating salt meat, tired of seeing nothing but ocean, tired of being stuck on a tiny ship. One night, a ball of fire blazes across the sky. The sailors watch it fall into the sea. Is it a warning sign? Should they turn back? Are they going to die? But Columbus knows it is just a meteor. Sail on, he tells them, and they go on. One morning, the sailors see another strange sight: a blanket of seaweed covers the ocean. Will the ships get stuck? The sailors are afraid, but not Columbus. Sail on. He cries, and on they go. They have been at sea for almost two whole months. Where is the land Columbus promised? Columbus points to the birds flying overhead. He points to the leafy branches floating in the water. Land must be nearby. More days go by. The sailors complain loudly. Who cares about finding a new route to the Indies? They just want to stay alive. Columbus must turn back now. If he does not, they will throw him overboard. Columbus begs them to wait, just three more days. He says. The first night goes by. On the second night, the lookout on the Pinta sees something ahead. The moonlight is reflecting off a sandy beach. Lad, lad! He shouts. The message is sent from ship to ship. It is October twelfth, fourteen ninety-two. As the sun rises, 
everyone can see an island. This must be the Far East. Three boats go ashore. The sailors are so happy to be on land. They kiss the sand. There are people on the island. Columbus calls them Indians because he thinks he has reached the Indies. He names the island San Salvador. He says it now belongs to Spain. But the island really belongs to the people who live there. The Indians have never seen men with swords. Why have they come? What will they do? Columbus gives the Indians shiny beads and tiny bells. The Indians give Columbus soft, cool cloth and colorful birds. People in Europe do not have cotton or parrots. The Indians are wearing gold rings. Columbus asks questions with his hands. Where does the gold come from? The Indians do not understand. Columbus sails further west to look for gold. He visits other islands. He meets more Indians. Most are helpful and friendly. They live in grass houses. They sleep in rope beds called hammocks. They travel in long boats called canoes. Columbus sees many new things. But where is the gold? Early one morning, a strong wind drives the Santa Maria aground. The ship is wrecked. Columbus moves to the Nina, but there is not enough room for everyone on the tiny ship. Many sailors must stay behind on the island. Soon, the Nina and the Pinta are ready to sail back to Spain. The ships are already loaded with many new kinds of food, corn, potatoes, peanuts, papayas, avocados. Columbus has also forced six Indians to come with him. People in Spain have never seen Indians. On the way home, the weather changes. Day after day, fierce winds batter the ships. Huge waves wash over the decks. Even Columbus is afraid of sinking. On March 15, 1493, Columbus finally reaches Spain. The voyage has lasted 32 weeks. Columbus rides on a mule to visit the king and queen. Everywhere along the way, people gather to cheer him and to see what he has brought back. Columbus is a hero. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella listen to his stories. They call him Admiral of the Ocean Sea. They believe he has found a new route to the Indies. They have no idea that San Salvador and the other islands he visited are not part of the Indies at all. For the rest of his life, Columbus never knows how truly great his discovery is. He has really found a new world, a world that no one in Europe knew about. It is called America.